TCI is brought to you by Forestry, sire of 42 stakes winners, including 2011 Preakness winner Shackleford. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. Joel, this is a huge weekend of racing. We have two major derby preps, the Risen Star and also the Fountain of Youth. Huge weekend, John. We've been waiting for this weekend. Obviously, mostly for the Fountain of Youth on Sunday because you have such big headliners in there. Sure. Mainly the seasonal debut of Union Rags. We're going to talk about that. But, you know, the Risen Star is not a bad race either. It's a prep for that million-dollar Louisiana Derby, which will no doubt be a pivotal race in the Kentucky Derby because the fairgrounds play so much like Churchill to me, and they're giving away a million dollars. So I think that race is really going to make an impact. Then you have some other races around the country like the Borderland Derby, the Turf Paradise Derby. We'll talk about those a little bit. All right, let's jump right into the Risen Star. Joel, we see the first three finishers of the LeCompte return in this race, yeah. but we see a horse shipping in from Gulfstream Park. His name is El Petrino, impressive allowance winner last time out. Todd ships into Louisiana, very interesting. Well, there's two things people want to see out of the Risen Star this week, in my opinion. El Padrino, you mentioned Todd Pletcher has so many good horses. He has a couple in the Fountain of Youth Stakes. However, El Padrino is a horse with a lot of talent that's really at the top of a lot of people's derby list for that ability to handle the classic distance. Right. I think when you look at his pedigree and his running style, a lot of people know he's accomplished around two turns, really think he could be a top derby contender because he can handle the distance, unlike maybe some of the other Pletcher three-year-olds. They're going to want to see how he runs this weekend against those LeCompte horses, and they're going to want to see how that local talent in New Orleans, the top three finishers in LeCompte, how good that form was against a horse like the El Padrino. Well, let's talk about those top three finishers for a second. We see Mr. Bowling, and we also see Z Dagger. Joel, we talked with Zayat earlier in the week. They really like their chances in this race with Z Dagger. And they should, because the horse loves the track, and he's only going to get better, John. He's a lightly raced horse. And you know what? It looked like he ran in spots last time out to me in the LeCompte Stakes. Just couldn't quite put it together and stretch to get to Mr. Bowling. He'll get his rematch opportunity, and they say he's training great. All right, you mentioned Mr. Bowling. How's he training? How's he doing? Does he have a good chance in here? Well, certainly Larry Jones is on fire, and he wins a lot of races at Fairgrounds. John, I expect a big performance, and I know they do as well from Mr. Bowling. The question is, how good is Mr. Bowling and the rest of those comp horses? just like we talked about. I mean, can they run with a horse like El Padrino, who's going to have that long stretch at fairgrounds to really kick it in? And what's interesting with El Padrino, too, i got to mention that he's two for two in the slop. And there's rain in the forecast this weekend. If it's a less than fast track, that really even more plays in the hands of El Padrino. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye there in Louisiana, but I want to move now to the Fountain of Youth. It is the marquee race of the weekend. Right. We are seeing Union Rags. He makes his three-year-old debut. Joel, this is the Kentucky Derby favorite right now. Can he get it done against the likes of Discreet Dancer and Algorithms? You know, it's, it's a very intriguing race, John. You only get eight in here, but really it boils down to those three horses. Algorithms, Discreet Dancer, and as you mentioned, seasonal debut of Union Rags. I don't expect an A-plus performance from Union Rags. It's just not typical of Michael Matz. He's gone slow with this horse. He's a bigger type horse. I think he's going to need a race, which makes him extremely vulnerable in here. The two Pletcher in-form horses have a big tactical edge over him. And depending on the way that track typically plays, John, where it really caters to speed, I think it, it could be problems for Julian Lepper and Union Rags running down these in-form horses, especially if they handle this middle distance of a mile and a sixteenth like they probably will. So don't expect him to win this weekend. I don't think he has to. Just needs to be running late, and this is a prep. We'll find out more about him in the Florida Derby. Well, Joel, let's talk about a horse that is in form, and that is Algorithms. He freaked in the Holy Bull, got a 105 buyer in one by five lengths. He's going to be tough in here. I think he is going to be tough, John. I mean, to me, he's your horse to beat in this race because he's in such good form right now. And what's interesting is we've talked about how brilliant he is. He's getting his first test around two turns, but he is by Bernardini. I think he's going to handle the mile and 16th distance, particularly horses that are classy middle distance horses, first time stretching out. They should be able to handle it. Again, that track should carry him some. I expect him to stock his stable mate, Discreet Dancer, in here. And I think he has a better opportunity to get the distance than Discreet Dancer does. So I expect a big performance from Algorithms. You know, coming out of that holy bull, it was a sloppy track that day, but he loves that track so much. He's your horse to beat in here. I think Todd Pletcher, he's expecting a huge performance from Discreet Dancer from what he's been saying. He loves this horse, and Joel, he is really fast. Well, that's what makes this race even all the more intriguing. I mean, 
right now, we're, we've already talked about Union Rags, your early derby favorite. Algorithms is in the top three in most people's list. And then Discreet Dancer is arguably the most talented three-year-old we've seen this year. I mean, he, I hear he's Todd Pletcher's favorite in the barn. They haven't gotten to the bottom of the horse. But he is a purely brilliant pedigree, John. Now, he might handle him out on a 16th. What's interesting is his sire, Discreet Cat, was very brilliant too. And early in his career, when he was in form, even though he might have been a better miler, 7 8 horse, he beat Invasor, the only horse to beat Invasor in Dubai, John, beat him handily at a mile and an wow. eighth. So I could see this horse getting loose on the lead and just crushing this field on the front end, especially if a stable mate allows him an e easy lead here because you really have more closers uh, within the body of this race than anything. All right, so if he wins this race, does he jump to the top of the Kentucky Derby list? Yeah, discreet dancer? No, yeah. I don't even think he would make the list for me, John. Again, wow. again winning a race like this at a mile and a sixteenth over this track, it's not going to impress me when I look at his pedigree and his ability to get a mile and a quarter in May 5th, especially with all the speed that looks like it's going to show up in the Derby this year. Discreet Dancer has to show me more than that. He has to show me an ability to not only settle, but also stretch out down the line. So it wouldn't surprise me if he wins this weekend. wouldn't surprise me if he beats Union Rags, but quite honestly, I don't see him as a Derby contender. All right, Joel, this is the year where we cannot leave out any three-year-old. You got to tell me, is there any other horses we should be watching this weekend? You know, there were two that caught my eye in the entry. One is in the Borderland Derby, which is just a prep, uh, you know, out there for the Sunland Park Derby, John, which will be a big-time graded earnings race. A horse by the name of Zach and Matt's been running against some very good maidens at Santa Anita, finally broke through. I think he's going to be your horse to beat in there, and if he can win this, I think he can be one of your favorites going into that Sunland Park Derby, so it's worth watching. And then on the undercard Sunday uh, at Goldstream, John, you got a horse by the name of Forward March, a $2 million son of distorted humor. Broke his maiden first time out by five as a two-year-old's been working forwardly. Now, Shug goes horse, Shug McGahey goes very slow with his right. horses, so I don't know if he's going to make the derby, but I think you got to keep an eye on it. More maiden madness, it sounds More like you're talking madness. about. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Joel. Make sure you guys come back on Monday. We will recap all these races, and we'll see if Union Rags is still the Kentucky Derby favorite.